think of how many diseases could strike you. Think of what you'd give to stay healthy. Every day, scientists at the program in cellular and molecular medicine think about your health, your immune system. So when you can't fight an infection, when your wounds fail to heal, the PCMM is finding cures to a multitude of diseases. They're saving lives through research. The success of PCMM is definitely fully based on the people, on the scientists that we have. I uh, built a computer when I was in fourth grade. Uh, I taught myself calculus when I was in sixth grade. I was very interested in Newton. Judy Lieberman went on to create a molecular therapy. It offers hope to more than 33 million people infected with HIV. My uh, undergraduate degree was in business. And after graduating from university, I worked in a bank, a large bank in Dallas, Texas, where I grew up. Michael Carroll's gene discovery could help five million people with lupus, mostly women of childbearing age. I um, took a year off from college and uh, I was a volunteer in service to America. I worked on an Indian reservation in, in Nevada. I thought I wanted to major in uh, anthropology. That changed quickly to psychology. I declared a major in psychology. Timothy Springer's research on a malaria vaccine could touch the lives of 500 million people in more than 90 countries. I uh, ended up going into uh, the Institute for Surgical Research in the Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich where I grew up. That was like the Starship Enterprise to go in there and I was from that moment hooked. Ulrich von Andrian's latest nanotechnology could impact two million Americans with celiac disease. When I was eight years old my mother died of cancer. When I was 11 years old my father died of cancer. And my goal was to do something significant in cancer research. Um, so it's been a lifelong goal. Fred Alt's discovery of a neuroblastoma gene could save the lives of 7 to 10 percent of all children with cancer. This talented and dedicated group is now part of the team at Children's Hospital Boston. PCMM scientists join children's doctors at the bench and bedside, building something larger than collaboration. I guess when I meet, I meet a patient with a disease, it's, it has more of an impact. I'm not just working in the lab because intellectually I'm interested in the problem. Here's someone who has, who has a disease and maybe what we're doing can, can make them better. I love the intersection between thinking about a patient and having it sort of collide with what we're thinking about in science. And that interface is a very exciting place for me personally. There was a patient who was in danger of dying. And I checked out the cells from the patient, and it turned out that they were missing these proteins that I had discovered. And um, wow, I, I realized this is really a wonderful place to be where the science you're doing can directly interact with diseases that patients have. Dr. Springer's basic research uncovered the cause of a severe immunodeficiency. He offered patients, young and old, around the world, for the first time, a diagnosis and a potential cure. This is where we are today. Tomorrow, we will create topical gels to fight herpes and HIV, new ways to tackle heart attacks and strokes, new methods to fight cancer. With the PCMM on board, we have a different way, an unrivaled approach to eradicating disease in place right now at the nation's top pediatric research center. And we're, we're all interested, you know, in the end goal of making connections to basic research and problems in health that make children better.